Well, hello, friends, and welcome to Boston.com's Cocktail Club. I'm Jackson Cannon, and soon I'll be joined by Sabrina Kershaw of Lone Star Taco Bar in Austin, Mass. Tonight, we're making drinks with cognac. It's true. Catching up about the local bar and restaurant community, and of course, sharing some tips the pros use for you to make great drinks at home. When you registered for this event, if you click through to the Gordon's Wine and Spirits uh, uh, link, then you were able to purchase the kit. And if you did, you've got everything you need. Uh, proceeds from that kit go to Off Their Plate. And this is an awesome charity. They buy meals from restaurants that need the business and distribute them to frontline workers and others in need. All the while, we'll be taking your questions from the chat. First, let me go through everything you're gonna need. You'll need a bottle of your favorite cognac. I have this wonderful 1840 style from Maison Ferrand. It's cool, it's got just a little bit more alcohol. It's not from 1840. It is in the style of cognacs from that time that were being imported here. So it is just perfect for uh, these old cocktails from uh, the American lexicon. For the French Quarter, you'll need some sugar cubes uh, or a little raw, a little straight sugar or even simple syrup if you have it. Um, I'm gonna use these machine cut uh, domino sugar cubes you can get in the store. Going to do the drink really kind of the old, old way. But if you have a simple syrup, you can sub that in. I'll tell you how to do that. No problem. You need some aromatic bitters. This drink really turns on the Peychauds from New Orleans. Um, but you can also add a little Angostura as an option together if you like that flavor of like more uh, kind of that cinnamon and a little bit of deeper, richer bitter. They play really well together. You'll need a slice of orange for that drink and then some sort of candied or brandied or otherwise preserved cherry is what we're gonna weave right into this cocktail. For the sidecar, uh, besides the cognac, of course, you'll need some lemon juice. Uh, I went ahead and squeezed mine ahead of time today because um, I knew I wasn't gonna need the twist or something for something else. So you can do that if you're working ahead. Um, and an orange liqueur, Cointreau is traditional. There's lots of different kind of beautiful ones. Um, and if you're using something else different at home, let us know in the chat. Um, we're gonna do straight cubed ice um, today, nothing fancy in that regard. And then for glassware, we're gonna use an old fashioned glass and uh, sort of your favorite cocktail glass for the sidecar. I'm gonna put a little ice in mine right now. Um, that way they're just kind of chilling while we're talking. And then I'll discard this ice when I go to make those drinks. And there'll be just a little bit of a chill on the glass, which keeps your drink colder longer. Other equipment, you'll need a mixing tin, or a Tupperware or something you can seal, a mason jar maybe to shake that sidecar. Um, I'm gonna do the old fashioned in a mixing glass, but you can do it in, in kind of any vessel you want. You can grind those sugar cubes up in a pint glass or in your tin. It's a very suitable place to stir that old fashioned style drink. Um, you need something to measure with. I'm gonna use these jiggers that we use in the bar, two ounces over one, three quarters over a half. If you don't have that, grab a tablespoon Tablespoon equals half an ounce, and we'll be able to make, uh, make that work. Um, tweezers or tongs are good for moving stuff around you. We're gonna be using our cutting board to prep one of our garnishes. A uh, couple of questions from registration I want to answer real quick. Victor asked, will you let us know in advance what the ingredients are so we can have those to make the cocktails along with you? Well, Victor, when you registered, there is that link out to Gordon's to buy the kit. Right below that are both of the recipes as well. If you just want to peruse those to see if you have that stuff. Also, if you go to the link at Gordon's, it has the full list of ingredients there. And you might say, oh, I have that. I don't have that. All those things are also available a la carte for delivery or pickup at Gordon's as well. Um, Cynthia suggests that we do a cocktail club pub crawl. I am in 1,000% this summer. Um, can't wait to visit in person all of these bartenders we've been making drinks with virtually uh, this whole year. And last, Jacqueline writes, mom sent this to me. She read it in the Boston Globe. Well, Jacqueline, mom is always right. And so very glad that you're joining us here as well. Uh, well, without further ado, Sabrina Kershaw has 17 years behind bars, both in New Hampshire and Boston. She was the first speed rack uh, Boston winner in 2011, has been a volunteer for that amazing charity ever since. She's an alum of the highly competitive Tales of the Cocktail Apprentice program and for the past six years 
has been behind the stick at Lone Star Taco Bar in Alston. If you'd like to support her directly by hitting the tip jar, her Venmo credentials are in the chat. It's Sam Boozles. Saboozles. Sorry, no M. <laughs> She's an excellent bartender, a friend. I uh, hope she forgives my Venmo misstep. Welcome back to Cocktail Club, Sabrina. Hi, thank you so much for having me back. So good to see you. How are you? I'm great. I'm enjoying the sunshine this time around. I believe it was pitch black last time, about two hours before we did this, so. Right, right. Well, yeah, it's still setting. Might get dark on us while we're going, but uh, boy, the day's getting longer at both sides. It's great. Yep. How's, uh, how's the vibe in the bar? People coming out a little bit more and more? Yeah, it's been, it's been picking up for sure. You know, people are getting vaccinated, feeling a little bit better about coming out. We, we've added a few front patio tables and um it's it's definitely been increased business still getting there still doing a lot of takeout but um you know getting those those takeout cocktails going to is is, is great so uh, I, I love that i can't wait to come by for a few dallas tacos and a margarita to go um, we got you anytime oh, i'm so glad well tonight we're not making margaritas we're making cocktails with cognac are you into it i'm super into it so One of them's glad. kind of a variation of a margarita, right? Yeah, I mean, it's like lives in that kind of realm. If you think about drinks as families, you know, it's probably if somebody likes a drink like a margarita or, you know, um, you know, a daiquiri or something like that, this would be the cognac cocktail for them, the sidecar that we're going to make later. And if mm -hmm. somebody's into bourbon and whiskey old fashioned, um, boy, this French Quarter is, I think, really going to hit the money. It's it's an interesting one for me. It kind of, it calls up all the different little things that you can do right or wrong and sort of gives you a chance to, yep. should we, should we, should we make that drink while we're talking about it? I would love to. Yep. Um, I'm, I'm going to follow use, your lead. I'm going to do the sugar cube method. I mean, in, in the bar, I would do this with a quarter ounce of simple syrup. Uh, but here I'm going to do a couple of these uh, carefully cut sugar cubes. And if, um, if somebody's using uh just straight sugar, do like a half a, just like a half of a um, tablespoon at most. Um, and for me, this is a fun one because it's just uh, um, almost like a sacrament to kind of play with this. I'm using just a little tiny cap full, you know, less than a quarter ounce of still or sparkling water is something that can help get it going. And I'm going to get my bitters right in there too, because Really, the platform of this drink is just building this base of like a little bit of sugar and water and bitters um, that all the other flavors are going to sit on. And that's two big healthy doses of Peixo. That's my prominent flavor. I like just a little kick of Angostura behind it in this one. If we were making a Sazerac, we wouldn't touch this. That's a, you know, a very much an old fashioned um, mm -hmm. where you stir just uh, usually rye, but sometimes cognac, sometimes both together with Angostura and doing absinthe rinse. But here, got my toddy stick, right? Why is it called a toddy stick? Because, you know, toddies were hot or cold once. And this was the cold toddy that we're making here. <laughs> um, it's already starting to break up in the glass, you can kind of see. So um, I think there's, Wondrich has some old poem where he talks about the, the pinging of the toddy stick, you know? And, and uh, for me, like that, is so Pavlovian that impression. I, I, it's when I walk in a bar and I hear like a daiquiri over somebody's shoulder getting that hard shake. I'm like, ah, oh, mouth water. <laughs> um, you know what I'm talking it's about? One of my you know favorite sounds on the planet. Right. And this one's close. You know, it's it's just a, a real gentle press here. To um, and if you've used a soda, like if you've used a cap full of soda water, if that's handy, what happens is that gas kind of like just helps you get like a, there like a little paste yeah um so that's down in the, the bottom of the mixing vessel but it really is also in a sense kind of right up the, the platform for the drink and the next thing we're going to do is a couple of ounces of cognac and then i always take a little step here before i add ice again because you know these bitters are made of alcohol and of course the cognac is an alcoholic beverage and sugar just doesn't want to go into them and especially won't want to once we drop a bunch of ice in there and start to chill it. And so I go around and around in here just a little bit, um, just kind of 
making sure that I, I got the sugar in it. In this case, I did it. If you see a lot of sugar granules in there, just keep stirring. They'll be, they'll be, oh my, I just got a whiff of that. I just mm -hmm. held it right in my face when yeah. I looked in it. Me oh. too. <laughs> okay. Oh, um, so I'm just gonna let this marinate for just a split second. I'm gonna cut myself um, a slice of orange in a way I really like us to do that. Most of you have been on know by now. I'm gonna take kind of just the end off the orange here. And I've got a, a little cara cara, which is just a sort of fun other flavor. And I have it, I, I like to do that when it calls for orange. I'll use a cara cara or I'll use a tangerine myself being originally from California. Then you just kind of pull straight down, get a couple of really easy to see slices like that. Okay. So we're ready with that. And then of course I have my cherries, but the first things first, I'm gonna stir this um, over some ice. And don't worry about overdoing the ice, four or five of these nice cube pieces. Um, you're gonna add a little more water this way. It's gonna chill the drink um, and help incorporate everything. And then just giving that a nice little swirl. And if I could whistle, I'd whistle. <laughs> um, you know, it, it, I was uh, thinking about this old fashioned as it relates to kind of other brandy old fashions, right? So when mm -hmm. we think of old fashioned, we think of the old fashioned whiskey cocktail, the long name for it. This is a, a drink built very much like this one, but with rye whiskey usually. And um, the brandy old fashioned, I always think of Wisconsin. And um, right. that, and Jeffrey Morgenthaler wrote this great piece in defense of it. And I love his writing. I love his opinions. And I, I probably share like maybe 60 or 70% of them. I think I like it when I disagree with them as much as when I agree with them, but he <laughs> did this full throated defense for like smashing all the fruit up, but we're not doing that this way because this isn't his show. Um, I just don't like that version where the, I don't like chewy drinks. I don't know about you, Sabrina. I don't, like, I don't like chewy drinks either. When I muddle something, a lot of times I, I, I kind of sift it out, you know, like um, I, don't, I don't like the, those kind of, you know, a bunch of vegetables or fruits just like pulverized. So now I've got this drink about where I wanted the ice sort of relaxed while I was filibustering. And I'm gonna take my glass and chill a little bit. I'm gonna get rid of that one. I'm gonna load it up with some ice. And then if I've done this right, uh, this drink is just gonna kind of pour nice and easy, like I'm pouring a ribbon right over these ice cubes. That's exactly what this one looks like. Oh, getting very excited. And now we're sort of in this <laughs> middle ground between like garnish as ingredient, um, you know, orange and cherry in an old fashioned, but maybe not obliterated um, into the drink. And so I'm going to just kind of carefully place these in a little orange slice. Now it's going to start giving its flavor. And I'm going to drop a cherry down in the drink right next to it. And then I'm going to take the straw that I'm serving it with. If, you, if you're just going to drink it straight over the glass, you can use the spoon that you stirred with. Um, and I'm just going to give this a few turns. And it doesn't take much to leach just a little bit of that kindness out of that cherry and a touch of that citrusy peel out of the orange and the Peychaud's bitters are just full of like this sort of Seville orange flavor. And there we I have- mine a twist. I like that. And a cherry, of course. Love it. Um, and so there we have kind of this, we gave it a name, but it's really an old practice with uh, a venerable old ingredient, uh, French Quarter Old Fashion. Cheers. Cheers. That is uh, a delicious thanks. drink. That's so, that's so fun. I just, I just like the texture of it so much more. I mean, I, and you get a little bit of that bitterness of the fruit and you get a little bit of that sweetness of the cherry and those will keep rendering in there as you go and you can snack on them later because you haven't crushed them that, to death. That texture that you're talking about when pouring it over the ice, that like ribbon-like silky quality, it, you can taste it. Okay. You can smell it. Well, 
you, and you get well yeah you, and and like yeah when you see it like you feel it mm-hmm. even even before you do all those things it's um it's kind of the the, the cool thing about cocktail and I, you know it kind of comes down to like this spoonful of sugar makes the medicine go down right <laughs> sure. i mean it's like well, I, what did i i named like nine ingredients you need for tonight and three of them are sugar you know so right it is what it is but it's it's funny in in this context as in a lot of others in in food yes it's bringing sweetness it's not really bringing the taste but it's bringing the, the texture that allows you to have all this taste you know um and so even like drinks that don't require a whole bunch of it sometimes you find it's the texture not right just that little tiny eighth of an ounce a little dash of a few drops of simple syrup can kind of like just and then suddenly you're tasting all the other things the way you want you know yep absolutely hmm. and the mixing properly the, the the stirring and pouring it over fresh ice it's all that all those things you know i know you drink a lot more whiskey than cognac it's funny though it's like i think of a drink like this that when we go and sub cognac it's like are we stumbling on to the way it was maybe before but we don't know you know and right and i i saw this like dissection of the sazerac that way which is a great version of a drink like this and they you know we know it is a rye drink and then just to be cheeky you start drinking it with cognac and then you fight about it and then i saw somebody do rye cognac and then rye and cognac split because at some point like somebody comes in and orders them split and you know you're trying not to be judgmental but you're a human being and you're like just make up your mind you know like and you're like catch yourself no wait all right you well, can't be in both you camps. It. or maybe you can it's like yeah it's a third camp you know so yeah i haven't done that with this prep but i know that it works cognac might be that secret spirit that's that's been the base of a lot of things that we've had in, in the past that we didn't know about you know uh, yeah, I'm with you on that. And just quickly uh, to a couple of the questions, all uh, cognac is a brandy it's made from grapes. Um, all brandy is not cognac. It has to be grape brandy made in cognac under special rules. Um, a bunch of questions about the styles of aging, the VS, VSOP. Um, that's a really weird English to French nomenclature about the age of, of the spirits, but it, that's not really kind of the most in, important thing. This is a great mixing cognac because it's a little bit higher in alcohol. So if you can see something that's over 80 proof, a lot of times that's fun to play with. Um, but there's no real rule about whether you should or shouldn't use a, a ripping BS for a sidecar, you know, or a, right. a beautiful XO in an old fashioned. Sometimes there's no real hard or fast rule about that. You just got to kind of explore your likes and dislikes. Um, for Curacao, people want to, whoa, it's an explosion. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yes, you can use Pierre Ferrand's dry curacao. Yeah. Um, yes, you can use Clement orange slub, shrub in our next drink. Sure. Um, what else? Uh, what are you What are you going to use? Uh, I'm going to use uh, Combier, which is very similar to Cointreau. I suggest if you're going to use dry curacao to add a bit of sugar or simple syrup to your recipe because it is dry. And these are sweeter right. orange cordials that we're using. Um, if you're gonna use the Creole shrub, I would also add a little bit of sugar to it too. Not as much as if you're gonna use the dry curacao, but um, you can, any orange cordial you can add to this, but if you're using a dry, you know, if you don't know what dry means, dry just means it's less sweet. So if you're using a drier orange liqueur, substitute it with a little sugar in the drink, even though we're gonna sugar the rim. Spoiler alert. Um, <laughs> you still want a little of the sugar in the drink. So um, but, well, that's the same. That's the same thing we were just talking about um, in terms of that texture. That's always the trick. If the curacao I'm using is really dry, that's always a trick I did in a margarita is put that quarter ounce in there. Um, same with same with this. If you uh, if you if you like find the drink isn't like lush, you know, that can be just the thing you need. Um, and if, if that's not your thing, if you really like a dry cocktail, then then don't add it. It won't be right. as as uh, traditionally balanced, I'd say, but you can certainly use a drier orange liqueur and put no simple syrup in it. Fortunately, it won't have the same mouthfeel. Fortunately, cocktails are kind of small, 
and we generally like to have a couple. So you get a chance to practice over the course of the weeks, like how you like it, you know? Um, after opening those bitters, I never put them in the fridge, is answering another question from one of bitters our friends. Bitters don't need to be refrigerated. And then, oh, here's one. This will, I think this is a little off topic, but I'm going to take it. Their grandparents are from Armenia and say the best cognac came from there. Their words, not mine, were they liars? No, they might have been inaccurately using the word cognac, but I think we have three languages at play here. And if anybody else has ever had the exceptional uh, brandies from Armenia, um, they know, yeah, they're banging. Um, a little harder to get around here. Uh, good value when you can find them. So no, they weren't lying, but they were just using a word a little bit inappropriately and calling it cognac. They might have said they like that brandy better than cognac. And it's who, worth noting is, that that the cognac is is like champagne. It's like saying champagne. Yes. There are many beautiful exactly. sparkling wines all over the world. American, there's cava, there's prosecco. Champagne is only sparkling wine from the Champagne region. It can only be from there. Cognac can only be from one particular part of the world. It doesn't mean that there aren't beautiful brandies, great brandies all over the world, but they cannot be called cognac unless they're from a certain place. Um, I'm seeing another question just real quick. Sabrina, will you hold up the combier that you're gonna be using as the orange liqueur yeah. for our friends? And I'm gonna handle yet another question. That's uh, uh, somebody's asking to use Grand Meunier, which we didn't talk about, which of course is a brandy and an orange that liqueur already brandy, together. Yes. So. So yeah, your sidecar might uh, go faster than mine. Who knows? Um, should we, hey, should we, <laughs> should we shake it up? Let's make a sidecar. Take us through it, like all gonna, the way. The. So I'm gonna actually, uh, I'm gonna start with uh, sugaring my rim because I don't want my uh, my shake and drink to sit in the shaker for too long. So I've already chilled on my glass a little bit. And you can rim this however you would like to. I'm gonna do a half a rim. I took some of the lemon that we squeezed earlier and I made a little slice and I cut it like this. It's gonna give it half a rim around there. And Jackson, are you using white sugar? I'm using a raw sugar. So mine's like in between the two, it's this, uh, this golden sugar. That's like a stage between white and raw that I've kind of sort of grown in love with. It's it's like a little pretty off white and it's oh, a beautiful. little more floral than regular. If you can't tell, I'm I'm at uh, my bar right now. This is this is what we use to sugar our rim. So I'm just going to keep it. Love that. And I'm doing the same thing. You are sort of rolling just that one side a few times. Yep. And this is. Uh, uh, Sabrina, you do this because you don't know if somebody really wants to drink this drink with the sugar or not, right? And that way they have right. the choice. Absolutely. Um, and I, I, I like it this way as well because I find that I like the sugar rim and then uh, at some point I, it starts going into my drink and I don't want that much more added sugar. But if you like that much sugar, there's nothing wrong with that. But especially when, with the raw sugar, it's bigger granules. I'll just have to uh, get the lemon juice. So depending on what you're using for your uh, shaker, I'm using a typical shaker here. We're going to do uh, two ounces of your cognac. And I like, then we're gonna do uh, three quarters of an ounce of what, whichever of your orange liqueurs you've decided on. We'll say I prefer to do the orange liqueur before the juice, especially if you're using something like a Combier or a Cointreau because they are a little syrupy and the juice will help rinse out your measuring cup of your jigger. And then three quarters of an ounce of the lemon juice. The 
if you are using a traditional shaker, it's important to know that you want to put the ice in this half of the shaker. The shake, the same side that you added your alcohol to, the smaller side, and then at, put the bigger side on because otherwise you could add too much ice. You have a spill. And then you turn it over. We're going to give it a really good shake. I don't believe we didn't get the shade together last time. <laughs> well, you know, the uh, that's right. And the the thing I hate about Zoom is it actually filters this sound out because it's repetitive. It's nice because you and I can talk to each other, but you shouldn't be able to. It should just be a cacophony of shaking sounds right now. <laughs> And then I'm going to strain it into your lovely glass. I'm going to double strain mine. If you have a tea strainer and you want to go for it, if not, you're just going to have a little bit of ice. But a tea strainer is all you need to finish that off. And uh, ooh, I'm spilling all over the place here. It's a little full. Uh, that's my sidecar. Cheers. Cheers. Going right for the sugar. I'm going half and half. That is so wacky. That's good. Hmm. Forget how like uh complex the orange liqueur with the lemon juice and then like the apple and sort of apricot nature of the of the cognac how that all comes together mm. oh. it's such a delicious drink that i don't think about often enough well i think we think about like it's maybe one of its like hipper variations like the champs Elysees when you introduce chartreuse into the mix you know mm -hmm. um you know because uh, like this was sort of known before we were all were like, hey, let's make all the drinks we don't know. And, right. and then you forget like, wait, the, the, this is at the top of that, you know, or the base of that tree. So yeah, I'm surprised well, I, it, it, it's not a lemon drop. It's way more complex. No, and it, it, it like we said earlier, it's not, uh, it's not definitely going to be the drink that you love if you drink a margarita or a daiquiri or a Colin, but if you are like, I think I like cognac and I want to start exploring, this is definitely the entry drink. One of our, and, uh, go on. And you can change, like, you can change the proportions a little bit. Some, like, some people like their daiquiris, you know, slightly off proportion. I think the original version of this drink was equal parts, um, which I think I personally wouldn't like, but some somebody might. Maybe you like half an ounce of uh, of the orange liqueur and more citrus. Maybe you like it flip flop. You can you can twist it around just like you can twist around a daiquiri and a margarita and a Collins and all those things based on your opinion. One of our guests asked us. Um, uh, or sort of mentioned, oh, I'm excited to be making drinks with cognac. I usually make my sidecars with bourbon. <laughs> and it just got me thinking about like that and the Frisco with Benedictine. Oh, the Frisco. The orange and like how all of these, all there's all these like kind of really cool sours. Like they, like if you like a Frisco, yeah. this is a great drink to have, you know? Yeah. And, I, and so I'm uh, thinking a lot about like- I haven't uh, thought about a Frisco in a really long time. Wow. Right. So for so uh, as the question rolls in, a Frisco is uh, whiskey with Benedictine, which is another French um, for kind of a little bit more like nuts and honey with with lemon juice. And then um, the chartreuse flavor, somebody's asking, it's kind of hard to relate the yellow that you there's yellow and green chartreuse. The yellow that you usually use in a Champs-Élysées has like 60 ingredients. Think of it as a real like floral um you know uh, it's like liqueur. herbal and herbal and honey yeah yeah green is more straight on herb bomb like 
that's 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 a flavor that's hard to explain yeah those are for me it's, know, always, it's always hard for me to explain the, the flavor of chartreuse yeah it's uh it's like trying to uh sum up like you know a book in a headline you know it's it's kind of it's kind of hard to do you know right um what else we got yeah benedictine love the monte carlo all right it's our people what is, does this spark any um any other ideas for like simple variations um along those avenues i think that's a a lot of the good stuff i mean we don't usually use lime juice in this area but i love splitting lemon lime on some of these things sometimes too just to get one that. more you know one more weird kind of angle like you know that those old recipes for sour mix that are lemon lime egg and sugar yeah. you know yeah that i mean that's our our house sour mix here is is uh heavy lime heavy lemon light lime sugar right that's it is uh i i would do a lemon lime split i mean that's maybe heavier lemon than lime um I mean, like the the original, like French seventy five, is kind of a riff, right? Yeah, yeah. It's a slightly, slightly tweaked, sparkling. Well, I would cocktail. definitely drop. I would definitely drop an ounce of champagne on the top of this and call it a royal sidecar, you know, or Absolutely. sidecar royale. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, drinks are so yeah. much fun. Anytime, know. anytime you add some champagne to it, just add the name royale to it <laughs> um hey one of our uh students is becoming the master here they said they split the there's cognac with rum and that just reminds me of that whole avenue that's the between the sheets that is a between the sheets sort of you know you start getting cognac rum gin start figuring out like which one of those you interchange that's a whole other landscape to go down as well especially with the orange liqueur is in a lot of those you know if so. anybody read the the article that came along with us that I wrote about the the sidecar, uh, I talked about the cocktail bar that I worked at in 2007, Noir. When I first learned about the sidecar, I had no idea that it was a classic cocktail. I didn't, I, it was just on our menu. And then I went to the B-side, which we all know and love, and they had the B-side car. Uh, but another cocktail on the, the Noir menu was Between the Sheets. And I, because we named a lot of our cocktails after film noir or after just noir and naughty things, I, I was very, I was a very green bartender. I didn't know that that was a classic cocktail for a long time right. until I started getting into more of the cocktail world. And I was like, oh, wow, this, this whole time I thought that we, would, <laughs> we could just name this, this, this drink, this, that, that, you know. That's so good, though, but that's why sometimes it's hard to know those stories. And then when you follow a thread like that, you realize there was a whole naughty era of cocktails with Cole Porter as the soundtrack, you know, like. Right, exactly. Like, you know, it's great to feel that connection. It's one of the things I love about drinking this way. Me too. Um, well, we're getting close on time. Somebody's asking a couple other little minute questions. Why do they call it a Boston shaker set? Because we're cool. I don't know. Um, <laughs> You know, because uh, they use it everywhere, they're saying, yeah, they do now. But uh, Boston was one of the centers of cocktailing in the 19th century. There's a Mr. Uh, Cox, Mr. Boston cocktail book. And yeah, exactly. Well, and there was this whole period of time where like if a whiskey sour had an egg white in it, it was Boston. Um, and so the, you know, the Hawthorne strainer is actually named for the Hawthorne Cafe, which was on Avery Street. So um yeah, uh, I hate to say it, but just because no, but we they're from up here, even though they've spread around the world. Um, mm -hmm. Well, that's pretty much all the time we have had uh, all we all we have today. I want to say um, we've got some great, great shows coming up. Uh, thanks for tuning in. If you didn't see Sabrina's uh, article on uh, Sidecar and other great drinks, find it on Boston.com. Her Venmo is Saboozled, and so is her Instagram. So if you're having trouble finding that article out there, pay her a visit, say hello, and you can link out to the story there. Uh, join us 
Next Thursday at 7 p.m., we're making sherry cocktails with Katie Hubbard. I'm so excited. Um, but we've got lots of great shows coming up this month, including we're going to make juleps right before Derby. We're going to be making tequila cocktails on Cinco de Mayo. So please join us, follow us, like us. Make sure you follow the link from registration to Gordon's Fine Wine and Spirits to pick up the Boston.com cocktail kit. You'll be supporting their uh, off their plate and getting everything you need for next week's cocktail club. Thanks, Sabrina. Thank you so much for having me again. I really appreciate it. You're the best. You're welcome anytime. And thank you all, friends. Cheers. Take care. Cheers.